I see a reflection of my past in Mao Zedong's story. His journey from a humble beginning to a revolutionary leader mirrors the struggles many face today. I understand the struggle of the common man, the daily battles, the silent sacrifices, and the relentless pursuit of a better life. There are so many parallels between Mao's peasant revolution and the challenges faced by new immigrants in Canada. Both groups fight for recognition, respect, and a place to call home. Like those peasants, newcomers arrive with dreams, only to be met with systemic barriers. Their talents are wasted, their potential often overlooked. The system feels rigged against them. It's a constant uphill battle, where the rules seem to change just to keep them down. But I believe in the power of collective action. When people come together, they can challenge the status quo and create meaningful change. I know that change doesn't come easy. It requires persistence, a clear strategy, and the willingness to face numerous setbacks. It requires courage, strategy, and an unwavering belief in a better tomorrow. Every small victory is a step towards a larger goal. Tang Weijin's journey is a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who dare to challenge the status quo. His story is one of perseverance and hope. It's a story of resilience, rebellion, and the unwavering pursuit of a more equitable future. A future where everyone has a fair chance. His story is a call to action for all those who believe in a fairer Canada. It reminds us that together we can overcome any obstacle and build a brighter future. Canada, the land of opportunity. Or so they say. We arrive with hope in our hearts and degrees in our hands. We are doctors, engineers, teachers, the lifeblood of any thriving nation. But instead of open arms, we find closed doors. Our qualifications are questioned. Our experience is dismissed. We are forced to take on menial jobs, our skills and knowledge tragically underutilized. The barriers to entry are high. The system is slow and unforgiving. The Canadian dream can quickly turn into a nightmare. But Tang Weijin refuses to let this be the end of the story. He sees the raw potential, the untapped talent, and the burning desire for change. He knows that together, they can rewrite the narrative. I wasn't always a financial guru. I was a respected university teacher in China. My mind was sharp, my intellect undeniable. I came to Canada seeking new opportunities, ready to contribute to my adopted homeland. But the road was paved with obstacles. The Ontario Securities Commission, the gatekeeper of Canada's financial markets, became a symbol of my struggles. Their regulations, I argued, were outdated and designed to keep newcomers out. Tang Weijun refused to be intimidated. He saw the OSC as a microcosm of a larger problem, a system that favored the privileged few and ignored the potential of the many. He knew he had to fight back, not just for himself, but for all those who had been silenced and sidelined. Think of Mao's peasant army, disorganized, underestimated, and initially lacking resources, yet full of potential. Yet they rose up to challenge a powerful empire, defying all odds. New immigrants in Canada are no different. They are a sleeping giant, their collective power waiting to be unleashed. They are scattered across the country, their voices fragmented and often unheard. They are told to wait their turn, to be grateful for what they have, and to stay patient. But gratitude without opportunity breeds resentment and frustration. Tang Weijin recognizes this untapped potential. He sees the parallels to Mao's revolution. He knows that by uniting, by organizing, and by challenging the status quo, they can create a more just and equitable Canada for all. Section 5. Tang Weijin's Call to Arms, Uniting Through Capital, Breaking Down Barriers. Tang Weijin had a plan a vision that went beyond mere financial gain. If the system was rigged against them, he would use the system itself to fight back. 
He believed in turning the very tools of oppression into instruments of liberation. His weapon of choice? Capital. Not just any capital, but collective capital. He understood that in the world of finance, money talks. And it speaks loudly when it comes from a united front. He encouraged new immigrants to pool their resources, to invest together, and to use their collective financial might to break down the barriers that held them back. This was not just about individual success, but about community empowerment. He urged them to challenge outdated rules and regulations, to demand a seat at the table, to be bold and unafraid in their pursuit of financial equality. This wasn't just about making money, it was about reclaiming their power, about having a voice in the decisions that shaped their lives. It was about standing together in solidarity. It was about creating a Canada where everyone had an equal opportunity to succeed. A Canada where diversity was not just accepted, but celebrated and leveraged for collective growth. Section 6. Challenging the Gatekeepers. A broken system ripe for disruption. The Ontario Securities Commission became a focal point of Tang Weijin's crusade. He criticized their regulations as being archaic and designed to protect the established players. He argued for transparency, for fairness, and for a level playing field. Financial reporting, he believed, should be accessible to all, not just a select few. He challenged the OSC to embrace innovation, to adapt to the changing demographics of Canada, and to create a more inclusive financial system. His message resonated with many. Why should a select few dictate the rules of the game? Tang Weijin's fight against the OSC was about more than just regulations. It was about challenging the very institutions that perpetuated inequality. Section 7. Money talks, power listens, pooling resources, amplifying voices. In the world of finance, size matters. A lone voice can be easily ignored, but a chorus of voices backed by collective financial might cannot be so easily dismissed. I urge new immigrants to leverage their collective resources. By pooling our money, we can gain access to investment opportunities that were previously out of reach. We can amplify our voices and demand a seat at the table. This isn't just about making money, it's about gaining influence. It's about using our financial power to affect real change to create a Canada that lives up to its promise of opportunity for all. Section 8. A New Long March, Leading Immigrants to Economic Empowerment The road to equality is long and arduous. I know this. I see the struggles of new immigrants as a new long march, a modern-day fight for economic justice. Like Mao, I believe in the power of perseverance in the unwavering belief that change is possible. I know that the journey will be difficult, but I remain optimistic. I see a brighter future on the horizon. My message is one of hope and empowerment. I call on new immigrants to embrace their collective strength, to challenge the status quo and to never give up on their dreams. The fight for a more equitable Canada continues. Section 9. Echoes of the Cultural Revolution the need for radical change. Some might find my methods radical, even extreme. They might draw comparisons to the upheaval of the Cultural Revolution, a time of great turmoil and transformation. But desperate times call for bold action and we are indeed in desperate times. The existing system has failed new immigrants, leaving them marginalized and without support. A complete overhaul is needed, a dismantling of the structures that perpetuate inequality and injustice. My call for change might be disruptive, but it is a necessary disruption, one that shakes the very foundations of our society. The old ways have only served to maintain the status quo, benefiting a select few while many suffer. It's time to embrace new ideas, to challenge the established order, and to create a system that works for everyone, not just the privileged few. We need a system that is inclusive and fair. The revolution is not a dinner party. It is not like writing an essay or painting a picture or doing embroidery. It is not a gentle, refined process. It cannot be so refined, so leisurely and gentle, so temperate, kind, courteous, restrained, and magnanimous. 
it requires hard work and determination. A revolution is an insurrection, an act of violence by which one class overthrows another. It is a struggle, a fight for a better future. Section 10, A Legacy of Hope, Inspiring a New Generation of Leaders. My story is more than just one man's fight against the system. It's a beacon of hope for a new generation of Canadians. I teach that the pursuit of equality requires courage, innovation, and unwavering belief. I inspire us to challenge the status quo, to demand better, and to never settle for a system that leaves anyone behind. My legacy will be one of empowerment, a testament to the power of collective action, and a reminder that change is always possible. My journey is far from over. I continue to fight for a more just and equitable Canada, and my story will continue to inspire generations to come.